Hey guys, Fallout here, and today I'm going over my official D2 Vault of Glass raid guide. If you're looking for timestamps of any particular encounter, I'll put them up on the screen right now, and I'll include them down low in the video description. I did put out a VOG refresher guide about a week ago, but that was before we knew what exactly was coming in the D2 version of the raid, and was more for people who wanted to refresh their memory on the D1 mechanics and be totally ready for a day one VOG completion in D2. You know, in order to get that sweet day one challenge emblem. Anyway, there's a lot to go over with the D2 version, so why don't we dive right in. The first thing you'll need to do, exactly like in D1, is to form the spire and open up the main door to the Vault of Glass. There are three Vex plates sprawled over a fairly large area, one on the far right, one on the far left, and one plate right up top in front of the closed door. You'll need to take control of and hold these plates while fighting off Vex. If at any point a Vex Minotaur walks onto a plate, it will disrupt your progress and you'll need to recapture that plate. When all plates have been held by your team for long enough, the Spire will finish forming and open the gate to Vogue. FYI, there should be an immediate loot chest right when the door opens up. On the topic of hidden loot, by the way, I won't be covering that in today's video, but Datto has a video on hidden loot in Vogue that you can check out, link in the video description. Meanwhile, if you want to see the route I took to get from the door opening to the next encounter, I'll show a quick version here. Okay, the next area is the Templar Room, and just like in D1, you'll be spending a fair amount of time here. You're gonna have to get through three encounters while you're here. Defend the Conflux Encounter, break the Oracle's Encounter, and kill the Templar Encounter, starting with Defend the Conflux. When you drop into the area, a big glowing Vex Conflux, kind of like a pillar, will appear in the back of the room. Your job is to kill Vex and make sure that none of them reach the Conflux and sacrifice on it. If too many Vex do that, you'll wipe and have to start the encounter over. Regarding the layout of the room, we usually break it into three areas. You got the left, you got the middle, and you got the right. With the first conflux, you don't have to worry too much about spreading out very thin across the map. Just make sure you're covering that main lane and defending at that one conflux in the middle. After you've defended the one conflux for a short amount of time, things will change. Now you'll be defending two confluxes, one on the left and one on the right. Now your fire team should split up into two groups of three, three of you defending the one on the left and three of you defending the one on the right. Rinse and repeat. Don't let any of the Vex sacrifice and everybody frag out. By the way, there are gonna be some Vex called Fanatics, and if you kill them, they will drop a glowing pool of goo on the floor. Don't touch or walk over that pool of goo because then you'll become marked, a status condition you'll need to clear away in a certain amount of time otherwise you will die. To be cleansed of being marked, drop down to the dead center of the map at the bottom of the stairs and hop on the center plate if it is glowing. Take note though, unlike D1, you can't waltz down whenever you feel like for a cleanse. It's less forgiving now in D2 and the cleansing plate has a cooldown. If you and your buddies are marked, I recommend heading down to the plate together, doing a three, two, one, go type countdown and hopping onto the plate together for a group cleanse. After defending both the left and right conflux for a short amount of time, the game will change things up again and you'll have to defend all three. The left and right ones that you just did, and the original one in the back middle all at the same time. Now you should divide up into three groups of two. Two on the left, two on the middle, and two on the right. Don't let the Vex sacrifice at the Conflux, don't get marked, cleanse if you do get marked, and don't get killed easy peasy encounter over. If you're looking for good loadout recommendations for the Conflux defense stage, anything that gives you area denial is kind of huge. Using the exotic grenade launcher Wither Horde is borderline cheating. It can auto reload with the catalyst and you can lock down entire choke points with little to no trouble at all. Shotguns and grenade launchers are also good for this part, just don't get too close to the fanatics. Roaming supers, especially those with range, are a good pick for right now. There's no boss to damage, so put on a roaming super, throw a little magic around the room, 
and F up the Vex no problem. There will be overload minotaurs every now and then, by the way, so bring something to deal with them. Even though I usually hate overload SMG, the Ikelos SMG is high tier for being able to make Warmind cells, and it pairs beautifully with Wither Horde. Next encounter, breaking the oracles. Relatively similar to how it played out in D1, but with one key difference that we will go over. First of all, oracles are little glowing lights that will pop up around the room in particular locations. Your goal is to shoot and destroy these oracles in a certain amount of time, and unlike D1, in a particular order. If you don't shoot and break the oracles quick enough, or if you shoot and break an oracle in the wrong order, order, your entire team will become marked. Like before, you'll need to group cleanse at the bottom plate, or you will all die. Then you'll have to redo the oracle phase again that you botched. Take a look at this old map I dug up on Reddit, also used in my D1 VOG refresher guide. The D2 oracles are in the exact same locations as D1, and again, when they appear, you will hear a sound cue because each one chimes. As mentioned, the only difference is that now in D2, you have to destroy them in a particular order. Here's how it goes down. Every wave of oracles will show you the exact order in which you'll need to shoot and break them. Yeah, you're gonna need to pay attention, but it'll show you the order two full times before you're given the opportunity to shoot and break the oracles. You and your teammates will have to remember what the correct order was that the game showed you and break each oracle in the correct order. Every time you complete a wave of oracles, a new wave will begin the same way, but you'll have one extra oracle to deal with each time. There are five waves of oracles altogether. Wave one will have three oracles, wave two will have four oracles, wave three will have five oracles, wave four will have six oracles, and wave five will have, you guessed it, all seven oracles. Here's what my team did. Taking the oracle map from D1, we divided the map up into three sections and had three dedicated oracle killers, one for each section. One oracle killer will be front and center and will be responsible only for the mid and L1 oracles. The second oracle killer will be on the leftish side of the map and is responsible for the L2 and L3 oracles only. The third and final oracle killer will be on the right side of the map and is responsible for R1, R2, R2 and R3. Sounds like a lot for the third oracle killer, I know, but the right three oracles, eh, they're not too far from one another. Oracle killers are responsible only for their assigned oracles, so don't try to, quote, help others with theirs. Your only job is to focus on yours. When the oracles are initially popping up and showing you their order, keep a mental note of which of your oracles are in this wave's order and what number they appear in the order. Check out the following clip. I'm the oracle killer number one on the middle of the map, and during wave one, where we have three oracles total, both oracles I'm responsible for keeping an eye on pop up in the order. I can tell from the audio chimes that my oracles need to be killed second and third in the order, respectively. I don't call anything out right away. I just make a mental note to myself that, okay, the middle oracle needs to die second, L1 Oracle dies third, because that is what the order showed me. When the oracles all finally pop up to be destroyed, I wait for the first oracle, wherever it is, to die, and when I see in the feed that my teammate has destroyed the first oracle in the sequence, I now know it's my time to break the second and third oracle of wave one. In a perfect world, all oracle killers should verbally communicate when they have killed an oracle and which number in the sequence they have killed. Not the name of the oracle they killed, mind you, so I wouldn't call out L1 when destroying that oracle, but if I did destroy the first oracle in the sequence, I would call out number one dead or something to that degree. In case communications ever do get botched though, keeping your eye on the feed is absolutely huge because you can count how many oracles have been destroyed by keeping your eye on the HUD. If all of my teammates had duct tape over their mouth, we'd still be fine in the oracle phase. Maybe better off actually, because I can hear and keep track of which of my oracles I need to kill and in what order and keep my eye on the kill feed to know when it's my time to kill my oracles if I have any that I need to kill in that wave. The remaining three guardians are on ad clear duty, one helping on left, one helping on middle, and one helping on right. If they do their jobs properly, the Oracle players should have nothing to worry about 
and can concentrate on killing oracles. I highly recommend Xenophage for this encounter if you're an oracle killer. Xenophage can one-shot any oracle, and if you're ever pinned down by a hobgoblin sniper, which will be popping up around the map by the way, you can one-shot them too at any range. For team ad clear, same as before. Wither Horde is cracked, Anarchy or even Telesto are fine. Just use whatever you find effective for ad clearing and keep the Oracle killers alive and Vex free. When you're done with the Oracle encounter, you're on to the final encounter of the room, killing the Templar. This is very similar to the D1 boss fight. At the bottom middle of the room, you'll find a relic. Whoever wants to can grab it, which will launch the boss fight. The relic wielder has a couple of moves they'll need to be comfortable with. A light swipe attack, which you can spam on the ground or in the air, great for ad clearing, and a ground pound attack from the air. By hitting whatever button you normally would to block with a sword, you'll perform the cleanse function, which we'll talk more about later. Your final attack is one you can only perform when your super meter is full. You hit whatever your button is to pop super, and you launch a projectile attack, which you'll be using in this fight to de-shield the Templar who is otherwise immune to all damage. The Templar is the boss that you need to kill. It'll teleport around the room to one of several key locations, which I will now show you, indicated by my friend teabagging the ground. The Templar can come to the dead center of the map, which is where he'll first teleport to every time. The second location is up on this platform on the left side of the map. The third location is also on the left side of the map, but back in the left corner near where you originally dropped in. The fourth location is on the back right corner of the map near where you dropped in, and the fifth location is on the right hand side of the map up on the ledge that overlooks the middle area. You'll know that the Templar is about to teleport because you'll see a glowing white circle which shows where the Templar intends to teleport to. You can block the teleport by physically putting a guardian in that spot until the circle goes away. The upside of doing that is you'll have more time to damage the Templar wherever they are in the room, but the downside is that more adds will spawn into the room every time you block the teleport. The Relic Holder can easily block the Templar because the Cleanse ability also acts as a protective bubble shield against his shots. Stand in the white circle, cleanse up, and prevent the Templar from going anywhere. Also, while fighting the Templar, you'll have periodic waves of three oracles at a time to deal with, which again need to be destroyed in a particular order. Because oracles are so annoying to deal with, most teams try to simplify the Templar boss fight by just doing the initial wave of three oracles, and then flat out one phasing the Templar while repeatedly blocking his attempts to teleport. Yeah, the room will fill up with adds, but you can cut through the Templar laughably quickly with the right loadout. Final thing to take note of when damaging the Templar, one teammate will randomly be picked to be detained, i.e. contained in a big Vex bubble. Whoever gets detained, call it out to your team and they will hopefully quickly turn around and shoot and break you out of your bubble. Here's how you can very easily burn through the Templar fight. Pick up the relic and launch the encounter. Kill all the adds as they spawn into the room and find and kill the three oracles that initially pop up in the correct order. Make sure that for the beginning of the fight, you have a couple guardians spread out around the room to keep an eye on all the oracle locations. When the third oracle is dead, relic holder, use your super attack to fire a projectile and lower the Templar shields. Now it's DPS time and everybody should unload. A loadout combo that was so popular on Tanix, AKA Anarchy and Double Slug Shotgun works really good on the Templar. Side note, yeah, I know you can hot swap between shotties with the quick draw glitch, I don't do that because I'm lazy and we still kicked the Templar down a flight of stairs immediately because he's a little bitch. My team started our DPS phase up on the top right to block a potential teleport, then eventually moved down low. But honestly, you could probably just start off the entire encounter down low and be fine. Relic Holder, after you de-shield the Templar, you are on permanent teleport block duty. Use your light swipe attack in the air to quickly fly around the map and block any attempted teleporting from the Templar. Between everybody using their super, slug shotguns, anarchy, and breach and clear, the Templar fight should be a relatively straightforward one phase. If the Templar does teleport, no worries, just clear adds, get organized, and kill him in another damage phase. Other loadout recommendations, Titan Bubble for extra weapon damage is top tier, and even though the damage output isn't quite as good, Radiant Warlock Wells can help you with keeping you and the team alive from both the Templar and all other garbage hitting you in the room. The Star Eater Hunter Boots are top tier for its ability to pump up your super damage, and all your other weapon damage for a short duration after popping your super. And of course, who could forget the Falling Star? In addition to damaging the Templar with weapons, why not just flat out nuke him with multiple thunder crashes? 
If you've already got one or two Radiant Warlock Wells, why not put the other Warlocks, if there are that many Warlocks on your team, on Geomag Chaos Reach. Weapon-wise, if you don't have Anarchy and Double Shoddy, Breach and Clear Wither Horde paired together with an auto-loading rocket launcher works great too. Bonus points if that rocket has lasting impression, by the way, but be careful not to fire your rocket until after a teammate has already been detained and broke free, otherwise you could end up rocketing yourself. There's plenty else you can use, but those options are my current favorite. When the Templar is dead, yay good for you, progress deeper down into the vault until you find yourself at the next quick little encounter, the Gorgon Maze. There's a couple hidden chest locations here, but for now I'll be focusing on how to get through and complete the raid. Again, check the data loot video. The Gorgon Maze is 100% the same as it was in D1. I'll bring up the old map that we used in the refresher guide. You spawn right here, and you need to exit the area by finding the hole in the cave wall located here. Patrolling the cave are Gorgons, aka creepy looking harpies who won't attack you directly, but will wipe your entire fire team guaranteed if they see any of you. And by see, I really mean you have to get within like 20-ish meters of their field of view. They won't wipe you from across the map. They can't see that far. From the beginning of the maze, head into the cave, veering left overall, but sticking to the wall on your right. Using the nearby rock for cover from the Gorgon on your immediate left, head up the giant rock formation in front of you and continue to follow the path I'll show you now. Next, there's a very quick jumping puzzle that isn't too hard. Wait for the first structure to appear in front of you in the air and jump on it. A second and third will eventually pop up. I usually go from the first to the second to the third and then jump way deep to reach the opposite wall of the cave. Head left along the wall to reach the door to the vault that will open when all players have arrived. Now you'll find yourself in the final room of the Vog Raid and good news, there's really only two things you have to do in here. Encounter number one is defend the Conflux, kind of like how you did in the Templar room, but maybe with a few more steps. And encounter number two is killing Atheon, the big bad raid boss. Let's quickly talk about the layout of the room. There's a big staircase at the very back of the room opposite where you came in with a couple of stone pillars. There's also a left side and a right side of the room, each with a big portal door that won't be open right away when you enter the room. Finally, in the dead center of the boss room, there's a little stone island around a pit but that won't really become relevant until the boss fight. For encounter one, you gotta defend multiple confluxes, none of which you can see right now. First, clear all the Vex out of the main boss room, including the big gatekeeper Hydra teleporting around. When the gatekeeper is dead, it will drop a relic, a shield exactly like the one from the Templar encounter. Now that the gatekeeper is dead and you have the relic, two players on your fire team need to open up the portals on each side of the room. You do this by standing on the Vex plate on the far left or far right side of the boss room, located just a couple meters away from each portal down a small flight of stairs. You can also stand on top of the small pillar located inside each Vex plate, either standing on the plate or on the pillar will open the portal after a short period of time. When both portals are open, two different guardians should run through each of the now opened portals. Going through the left portal will teleport you to Mars, and going through the right portal will teleport you to Venus. Here's an easy way of remembering that, by the way. Mars has four letters and left has four letters. Also, Venus has five letters and right has five letters. Mars portal is left, Venus portal is right, easy. Now, you could have the portal openers run through the portal, but I usually like to keep them in the boss room guarding the Vex plate, because if a rogue Minotaur wanders over at any point, you will lose control of the Vex plate and the portal will close. So two guardians keeping the portals open, one guarding each plate, two different guardians heading through the portals, one through the left, one through the right, and two other guardians just hanging out in the boss room killing ads, one of which has a shiny new relic shield. Whichever guardian on your team goes through a portal, their new job is to clear the area of all Vex. After about two or three waves of fighting Vex, a mini boss will spawn in and it'll be one of two things, either a Wyvern or a Minotaur. There will always be one Wyvern and one Minotaur, but whichever portal they 
first appear in is always up to RNG. Whichever side has the wyvern, well, your job is easy. Just straight up kill it, no hesitation. Whichever side has the minotaur though, you need to call out right away that your portal is the one with the minotaur. The reason why the minotaur is so special is because it has a unique shield that can only be taken down by a guardian wielding the relic. So relic guardian, who right now should be hanging out in the boss room, when you hear which teleporter has the minotaur, stop what you're doing and head on in. Again, remember, Mars is left and Venus is right. Relic wielder goes in, bashes the special minotaur to death, and then drops the relic on the ground. Why do they drop the relic on the ground? Well, any normal guardian can go through any portal, Mars or Venus, back and forth at will, repeatedly, with no penalty. Any guardian who goes through the portal holding the relic, however, gets smacked with a cooldown that will not allow them to go back through the portal for another 45 seconds. And that's really no good, because there's going to be another minotaur spawning in the other portal any second second now, which requires the relic to be killed. So relic wielder, when you've killed the first special minotaur, drop that relic on the ground and whichever guardian originally went through the portal to clear ads, pick it up and take it back through the teleporter into the boss room. Head over to the other teleporter and drop it on the ground in front of the other teleporter. In a perfect world, you'd head in and deal with the minotaur yourself, but you can't. Remember, 45 second cooldown because you took the relic through a teleporter to get it back to the boss room. Whichever guardian is available in the boss room, i.e. not holding a plate to keep the portal open, pick up that relic and head into the other portal where there will be another minotaur needing to be de-shielded, which again can only be done with the relic. You're going to be doing this back and forth. Every time a shielded minotaur is killed, you need to essentially relay race the relic back through the portal to the boss room to hand off to another guardian to take into the other portal, rinse and repeat. You're going to do this a couple times, sending the relic back and forth between portals to kill the special minotaur, all the while making sure that no Vex sacrifice themselves at the conflux located inside each portal. If you're one of the guardians in the boss room at any point in time, keep an eye peeled for the occasional gatekeeper Hydra. Every time one pops in, all portals will immediately be turned off and will not be able to be turned back on again until you kill the gatekeeper Hydra. After defending both confluxes and killing several minotaurs, you'll see text on your HUD that reads, a new conflux appears before the glass throne. At this point, everyone head back through the teleporter to the boss room, and now you'll only need to defend just the one conflux that's now front and center at the bottom of the giant staircase at the back of the room. A lot of Vex will show up, kill them all. Shielded Minotaurs will show up as well, but all you gotta do is whack them down with the relic and you should be good to go. When enough time has gone by, encounter over. Recommended loadouts, I said it before and I'll say it again, any part of the raid that requires you to defend a conflux is easy mode with the Wither Horde, especially with Breach and Clear, which makes quick work of the Wyverns and the Gatekeepers. I mean, all grenade launchers are fairly cracked now thanks to Breach and Clear, but any grenade launcher with blinding grenades will help a lot in dealing with groups of Vex bunched up together. For anyone planning on defending the plates in the boss room, remember that you're going to have to deal with overload champions, so be sure to bring a weapon that'll be able to stun them as needed. Any crowd control roaming super will be great for the conflux encounter, especially for the folks heading into the portals. And now finally we come to the final encounter, killing Atheon. Here's the game plan, you'll all be out in the boss room, and Atheon will teleport in at the bottom of the big staircase where you earlier defended the final conflux. He's going to pace around the room trying to damage you, just stay back for now, near the the front of the room where you came in or near the Vex plates, since he'll have a hard time shooting you while you're there. Don't bother shooting him right now, by the way. Won't do any good. Instead, spend your time shooting the flying Vex harpies that spawn up in the air on both the left and right sides of the room. Remember not to kill every harpy on each side. If you kill all of them, a brand new wave of harpies will immediately pop in. So what we did was leave one lone harpy on each side up in the air. As long as you leave that one harpy alive on each side, more will not spawn in. Eventually, after about a minute, Atheon will randomly teleport three guardians into one of the two portal rooms. First, let's talk about what happens to the team of three who got randomly teleported. Your first job before deciding which of you will pick up the free relic shield on the ground is to call out which side you got teleported to, Mars or Venus. Just look around and figure it out. Mars is red, duh, and Venus is green. Call out which room you got teleported to. Your friends back in the boss room need to know which side you got sent to so they can work on opening up the right portal 
who eventually get you back to the boss room. Second, the relic. When you get teleported to either room, there's a free relic and someone needs to pick it up right away. Reason being is that while you're teleported away, your guardian will be in a constant state of marked by the void, meaning your HUD is gonna get really, really dark over time and you're gonna need someone with the relic to periodically cleanse all three of you. If they don't, you won't be able to see where you're going. Two other things in the portal room you'll need to be worried about. One is enemy Vex, which you'll need to kill. And far more important is number two, the Oracles. They're back and more annoying than ever. Every time you get teleported away by Atheon, and it's gonna happen a few times, you'll have three waves of three Oracles that you'll need to shoot and break. Just like the new Oracle fight in the Templar room, you need to destroy these Oracles in a particular order or all of you will die. How do you figure out the right order? Great question. Back in the boss room, the three guardians who didn't get teleported away have three very important jobs to do. Job one is to find out which side their friends got teleported to. Again, they should just tell you verbally and then you head over to the appropriate plate to open the portal so they can eventually get out. Again, Mars portal is on the left and Venus portal is on the right. Job number two for the boss room team is to call out which oracles they see floating in the boss room and the exact order in which they need it to be destroyed in the portal room. Do you get it? You see the correct oracle order in the boss room and you need to verbally relay that information to your fire team in the portal room so they know which oracles to break and in which order. This will hands down be the thing that most teams in the raid struggle with. It's a little bit tricky. I'm gonna explain it as best I can. There are six, count them, six locations where the oracles can appear. I've seen different methods used to call them out. Even though I didn't use the following method, I found a map that very cleanly identifies each oracle location with a number. I don't know why this map drew some oracles bigger than others. That's kind of annoying me. They're all really the same size. But the numbering is very straightforward. In this picture, the spawn area means where your teammates spawn in when they're teleported away to Mars or Venus by Atheon. You know that big archway at the top of the big staircase near where Atheon is in the boss room? That location is the exact perspective that your teammates have when they get teleported away to either Mars or Venus. They are looking at the same boss room that Atheon's in, except they are looking at it from the back staircase. So you're all looking at the same room, but potentially from a different perspective. That can make calling out the Oracle locations tricky, hence why I think the number system might be good to learn for newer players. My team went with something a little more archaic, depending on how you look at it. We had six callouts, portal left, portal middle, portal right, and arch left, arch middle, and arch right. Arch being the oracles located near the top of the staircase by the big broken stone arch, and the portal oracles located near the Vex portal gates. Regarding which are left and which are right, whoever we had in the boss room was flipping the callouts to make things easier for whichever team got teleported away. For example, here is me in the boss room heading to the back wall to help read out oracle locations. My first oracle callouts are portal mid, portal right, and portal left in that order. Rewind that footage. Again, portal mid, portal right, and portal left in that order. Uh, but Fallout, do you not know your left from your right? The first oracle's in the middle by the portals for sure, but the next one you see pops up on your left. Exactly, and remember that I'm flipping my callouts intentionally to make things easier on the teleported team that has to shoot these freaking things on either Mars or Venus. From their perspective, which again is from the very back staircase of the boss room, they need to shoot portal mid, then they need to shoot portal right, and then portal left in that order. And if that sounds too complicated of a system for you, I totally get it. Just go with the number system I mentioned earlier, whichever is more easier for you and your team. Reading the Oracle callouts from the boss room is no picnic. Right when half your team gets teleported away, remaining three guardians in the boss room, someone needs to be assertive and take the role of Oracle caller right away. You can't be passive about this. Somebody needs to take charge, head to the back wall and say, I'm calling oracles, damn it. Now shut up and listen. Other two guardians in the boss room, you gotta open up that portal door so your teammates can get back, and you gotta do job three, kill as many Vex as you can. After opening the correct portal, we usually bailed back to hang out on the far back wall with the Oracle Caller. It's pretty safe back there. Remember, only Minotaurs can reclaim the portal plates, and there are none that enter the boss room, so once you open that portal, feel free to head to the back wall. Okay, back to the team who got portaled away. You're hearing the Oracle callouts from your Shot Caller back in the boss room, you're destroying them on your planet 
in the right order as quickly as you can. Remember, if you're not fast enough, you will fail. In between Oracle killing, you should be destroying Vex and getting cleansed up by the Relic Wielder. Relic Wielder, there should be one shielded Minotaur who eventually shows up, either hit him with your projectile super attack or go bash his brains in. After completing three waves of oracles, you'll see text that says Guardians make their own fate. When you see that portaled away team, beeline it to the exit, cleanse up one last time for good measure, then head on through back to the boss room. Jump over to the small little rock island in the dead center of the map, and it is DPS time. Boss room team, once you see Guardians make their own fate, don't be shy, you don't necessarily need to wait for your relic wielding buddy and their friends to come back. Head over to the center island early and start DPSing. Eventually, everybody meets up on the island and hits Atheon with everything as hard as you can. Relic Holder, be sure to cleanse as needed. You can drop the relic periodically to damage Atheon too, but don't drop it for too long because if you leave the relic unheld for too long, game over. The Times Vengeance timer on your HUD indicates how much time you have exactly to damage Atheon. Here's something really important though. When your Times Vengeance timer reaches about 15 seconds remaining, someone on your fire team will randomly be picked to become detained, i.e. locked inside a Vex bubble. You'll know you're about to be detained in a few seconds because it will tell you on your HUD in the bottom left corner. If you do not pay attention to this, this will happen. The one person who gets detained immediately will also detain every other guardian within a few foot radius, and now your DPS phase is botched. So here's what you do to avoid that. If you look over and notice you're about to become detained on the timer, stop DPSing Atheon and leave the middle island immediately. I recommend jumping forward and left towards the Mars portal. When your detainment bubble happens, your teammates should take one second to look over and hit you with something, anything, so you can get your bubble broken and rejoin the DPS phase. Yeah, they're quote, wasting valuable DPS time by freeing you, but they gain a lot by getting you back in the fight to rejoin the DPS phase. Every time you're on the middle island dealing DPS to Atheon, by the time Time's Vengeance hits 15 seconds on your HUD, everyone should be asking, who's getting detained? Who's getting detained? Keep asking it over and over until the person on your team getting detained realizes that it's them and they leave the island. I'm telling you, you gotta be a little bit annoying the first few times regarding getting detained. Players can and will so easily forget that they are going to be detained and many a DPS phase will get completely botched. When the DPS phase is over, it's rinse and repeat. Do the whole thing again, the portal, the oracles, the DPS phase, everything and do it until Atheon is dead. Loadout recommendations. Xenophage is god tier for killing oracles. Even though it's probably not optimal boss DPS, I'll probably only run Xenophage for the near future on Atheon for the simple fact that it one-shots every oracle and makes that part of the encounter dummy easy. Yeah, Xenophage can't land crits on Atheon on its own, but if you have the Divinity, or maybe anyone rocking Breach and Clear, then yeah, who cares? Deathbringer can actually do pretty good damage to Atheon as well, likewise for any auto-loading rocket launcher, bonus points if it has lasting impression. Snipers with Vorpal Weapon and Triple Tap, or fourth times the charm, are also a fine pick. Anarchy is a natural pick for hurting Atheon because it does repeated chip damage, and can activate Breach and Clear. Really though, to damage Atheon, you gotta use both weapons and supers. Back in D1, it was all, ooh, Titan Bubble in the back of the island, then let's shoot him with weapons only. Now you got Falling Star Titan Thunder crashing, you got Star Eater Hunter supering, you got Geomag Chaos Reach Warlock, you got a lot of things you can do. And remember, you can mix and match, tag Atheon with Anarchy to activate Breach and Clear, then pound him with a Falling Star Titan Thunder Crash. He'll knock you away for sure, but just get back on the center island and keep shooting him. The only super I would really recommend that at least one person on the team has, probably a Radiant Warlock Well, to be dropped in the dead center of the island every time during damage phase. You don't need one per se, but it really can help you deal with all the annoying ass harpies in the room trying to shoot you while you're damaging Atheon. And that's pretty much it. There are definitely more loadout recommendations than I listed in today's video for each encounter, but if I went over every single one, the video would probably be about three hours long. If you have a loadout that worked really well for you and your raid team on any of the encounters I've gone over today, be sure to tell me about it down in the comment section. Big shout out to all my patrons. I appreciate you so much. Click the like button if today's video helped you in any way. And don't forget to subscribe. It is free to do and helps my channel a bunch. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.